Okay. So, um, to start off, so Victoria Bells, you are a resident at Water Street Studios, as am I, Rebecca McLaughlin. I'm also the events and facilities manager at Water Street. And really the purpose of these, um, these vodcasts are to introduce you, to introduce what it is that you do as your, as your primary practice as an artist. Um, so I'll just dive right into the first question, which is, when did you know that you had artistic talent? Uh, a good question. Um, I don't know if I formally recognized it until probably a ways in, but um, I was accidentally put into an art class in uh, junior high. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, I can't get out of this. I have no talent. How can I do this? And fell in love with it. Absolutely. Just, it was... I was like, how did I not do this before? Mm -hmm. um, and then throughout high school took classes and uh, actually applied and had a scholarship for, um, for uh, Pratt Institute in New York. Wonderful. Um, but uh, I didn't end up going. So <laughs> uh, kind of, I don't know, a crazy story, you know, as life goes. Um, mm -hmm. But I ended up coming back to it later, uh, much later in life after being in the business world for, for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, um, I have a similar story, but what, what were the first classes that you took that you fell in love with? What was that first class? Uh, oddly, nothing to do with what I do now. Um, I uh, fell in love with oil painting. Mm -hmm. uh, drawing, I, I used to prolifically draw. Uh, just as much as I could on napkins, on scraps of paper, and you know, on my hand with ink pens, just um, anywhere. I was constantly uh, drawing on everything, mm -hmm. and um, friends would ask me to, you know, oh, draw my girlfriend, or <laughs> mm -hmm. just crazy things, but I was constantly drawing, and then uh, the first class that um, I was really drawn to was working with oil paints, okay. um, and then after that, um, took another turn and started doing 3D work uh, with, I, I did some clay, but that wasn't quite my thing. Uh, I really loved working with found objects and doing some uh, minimal welding and things like that, just kind of sculpting different bits and pieces. I did a, a piece where as a um, teenage girl going to the junkyard with my friend and, and getting some crazy looks because we just wanted to rifle through what was laying around in the junkyard and put it together. Nice. So, cool. um, yeah. Okay. But now you are very much a glass artist. Um, but that's kind of a general term, right? So maybe you could go in and explain a little bit more about specifically what you, what you do with glass, um, subject mm -hmm. matter. Um, but I'll let you, I'll let you take it from there. Well, so as I said, I was in the business world for a long time, and then um, when I had my children, I have two daughters, I was home and found myself uh, unexpectedly with a lot of time on my hands um, and this need to create um, with just an, an outlet. I needed an outlet. And I started making things, uh, not with any formal knowledge of what I was trying to do, just started making things. It was um, a lot of uh, different things. Um, I would tinker around and put together again with the found objects mm -hmm. and things like that. And um, I started getting requests from people to make jewelry specifically. Mm -hmm. um, that was something I could do easily. Didn't need a lot of tools at, the, at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and then somebody gave me a piece of glass and I was just enamored with it. And I wanted to know more about how did it come to be? How did they, how, what was this process? Mm -hmm. And so um, I did some research and I found a local place that offered uh, a simple, um, what they called lamp working, which is um, working with molten glass, uh, but it starts in a cold state and you're using a torch and heating that uh, and then winding it around steel mandrels or or it could just be free form um, to create, usually it's beads or uh, small sculptural objects, things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I took a class and was immediately hooked. This was it for me. I just went right down the rabbit hole after that. 
Um, it was uh, unlike any material I had ever worked with before. And um, I just wanted to know all there was to know about it. Mm -hmm. um, there's many different types of, of glass, as you mentioned. There's, um, you know, you can do fused glass, which is mostly, you know, you're working with it cold and then maybe some sculpting, but the majority of the magic happens within the kiln. Um, you know, uh, classic uh, furnace blowing, uh, you're, you're dipping uh, molten glass out of a, a vat and then blowing it on the end of a tube. That's what most people are, are familiar with, mm -hmm. the big furnace work that you see in, in Italy and all that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but they're all kind of, you know, interrelated in that. Um, there's different types of glass that you can use, and I like to work with all of it. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of dabble a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, I've seen, you know, obviously, because we're both resident artists and we're, we're studio neighbors too, but um, <laughs> um, I get to see you a little bit more than I see some of the other resident artists. But um, yeah, your work is, um, you know, obviously the beads and, and creating the beads and then piecing them together in, in jewelry. Um, but you also do a lot of really cool sculptural stuff, really abstract yeah. sculptural. Um, and what I was always really blown away by was your... Um, your your uh, glass jewelry, you know, or these mm -hmm. these pieces that seemed so fragile, yet absolutely wearable art, and and right. just really incredible. And um, and you've done pieces that are, you know, you know, much smaller and 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 less elaborate to pieces that are, you know, completely cover the whole <laughs> chest area. And I love that. I love it. So beautiful. But um, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I've got another couple questions here because we don't have a ton of time and we could probably yeah. talk all day. Um, but, you know, so you did talk about your process, um, but also, you know, and I kind of alluded to this just now about your style um, and, and your, your um, and I know that, you know, as an artist, um, sometimes we, we, we have to make things that we know will sell. You know, we know, right. you know, the bead work, you know, even though you love it, it's still, you know, amazing mm -hmm. work. Um, you know, it's not necessarily always the, the work that you want to be doing. But if mm -hmm. you, if you could just go crazy, do whatever you wanted, didn't have to worry <laughs> about money, didn't have to worry about selling it. What, what do you think you'd be making right now? Oh, wow. Well, it's so that everybody's, uh, every artist's dream is just to create yes. without, um, <laughs> no, unfettered, just without restriction yep. and that. Um, what would I make? I, I have dreams of doing uh, elaborate installation pieces, mm -hmm. you know, pieces that would tell a story and fill an entire room with light and energy and, um, and, and just uh, a, a sense when you walk in, you just lose yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, that might be an abstract, I tend to be drawn to nature a lot. Uh, so I do a lot of organic type forms, leaves and flowers and things like that. But, um, I like the possibilities that glass offers and how it's, it's, um, you can incorporate a lot of other materials with it, metals and, and, uh, you know, organic things. Granted, they can burn up, but you can. You know, I I like the idea of of, of showing the fires. So I, I sometimes think of doing something where you would have you know living uh, moss growing up out of the glass, maybe in an outdoor installation, you know. And so the the art becomes part of the existing the world around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the existing environment, or mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe something uh, something would be burned. You know, it, it, it'd be part of a fire, and then you'd have this molten glass. Um, surrounding it and that but uh, I have a lot of ideas I one of my something I, I tell myself I need to write them down more I don't <laughs> they That's tend to come when I'm driving <laughs> so um, when I'm kind of lost in music looking, yeah I really should um, uh, it's um, something I need to do but don't well don't know. no time like present <laughs> yeah yeah right right we all we um, all have those we all have these these um practices or habits that we should you know get into that i'm i'm just as guilty of i you know i always think like writing you know writing is one of mine you know writing yeah. my work it's not it's not a strength of mine at all and mm -hmm. um you know but it's one of those things that the more you do it the better you get and then you know it sure. helps to formalize ideas and and that sort of thing mm -hmm. but 
I would really love to see that installation happen. I think that would be very, very cool. And I'm already thinking about where you could do it, um, you know, along mm-hmm. the river, right, you know, behind the, yeah. the building where we reside. Well, that's really that would be That would be fun. That would be very interesting. I think so, too. I think so, too. Um, and as we, you know, don't really know what's going to happen um, in, in the near future with, uh, with our work and, and how we, you know, get our work out there, you know, this could be something that leads to, you know, I mean, it's all the innovation that, that you know, happens when we're faced with new circumstances. So, you know, maybe, yeah, and I've, and I've got, um, you know, another artist that I'm talking with, uh, as you know, Jeremy, but, you know, he's always talked about doing, because he's a ceramicist, but he's always talked about doing Reku outside and by the river. And it's, you know, we've always been talking about doing these more outside Mm -hmm. um, um, installations or or moving the work outside of the actual building. So this could be an idea that we, we keep thinking about and keep talking about. So I think it, it would be really something very interesting to explore, mm-hmm. um, explore a lot of different ideas right now. Um, mm-hmm. I tend to be a bit of a chameleon with my work, like you said, trying to, uh, yes, I make a lot of small things, but then taking that small and creating large with it and a bigger mm-hmm. idea, mm-hmm. being challenged by other people's ideas and collaborating and kind of bringing that together. So I think now is a good time to mm-hmm. look into that. Yeah, I think so too. And, and this kind of leads me to probably our last question, but you know, it's the most pressing I think right now for everybody is the challenges that we're facing. So, you know, we can take, we, you know, we could take that innovation and, you know, do something really cool that things that, you know, like you were saying, we probably wouldn't be doing, you know, if we weren't faced with all of these new things that we have to navigate through. Um, sure. And, and you as a working artist, um, you know, have had to really push yourself to, to be cr- more creative than you already are and come up with ways to, you know, get your work out there, you know, have visibility. Um, and that's what I'm hoping to do with this project too, is talk to all the resident artists so that, mm-hmm. you know, they, they have um, more of a voice than they did before. So, um, but yeah. yeah you you are doing a bunch of things though and one of those things is is online class through water street and you you've been an instructor there for a number of years too but um if you want to talk more about that or because i think uh, in- well right with the current situation so i've always my business if you will my art practice is thrived on um face-to-face interaction um and people coming in and and teaching them. Um, I've been teaching for over a decade now mm-hmm. and at Water Street for eight years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so obviously I can't do that right now in the same way that I, I would or I, and, and sharing my work is not the same either. So um, having to kind of dive in, mm-hmm. you know, uh, feet first with um, with all the technology that we're, we're lucky to, to have, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a decade ago, you couldn't have done this. I couldn't find classes or videos and how to's and all that. So this is really kind of exciting in a way, although a little bit, there's some trepidation there too, trying to figure it out and navigate it. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, having the ability to try to reach out and, um, and still share that process. And uh, I'm working with some things with our uh, school, um, school of art there at Water Street to um, maybe offer some classes of a different sort that would still incorporate uh, the glass Mm -hmm. uh, where we could still create things and some, you know, some videos uh, so I can still share what I do. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I find it interesting. I think everybody should. (laughs) Well, yeah, no, for sure I do. I absolutely do. And I think one of the things that you, um, one of the paths that, that this whole thing has led you on is to take your existing pieces you know, mm-hmm. so, you know, for example, your beads and then teach how to, pe- you know, like you, how you started, you know, years ago when you got, when you decided to really um, mm-hmm. go back to the arts, you know, where you were just finding found objects or then eventually, you know, if you stumbled upon glass and then you were mm-hmm. making jewelry and that, and those sort of things where you can take existing pieces and put them together you know right. we don't have to be there I and mean, this is a really unfortunate thing because when you teach 
um, you know, the, um, in your, in your previous classes, you had to be hands-on with, with yes. the students. You had to be there. You had to, you know, they're working with the torch and they're, you know, right. and you absolutely cannot social distance. <laughs> it, it's a you know difficult. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's something that, you know, hopefully in the future, I'm, I'm working on some ways to still be able to do that teaching. Mm -hmm. um, but in the interim, uh, to, you know, still offer some creative outlets for people uh, as mm -hmm. well as myself. Um, you know, I'm looking at uh, creating packets and people can, you know, make their own wine charms because who doesn't need a little, a little, mm -hmm. uh, a little mm -hmm. drink right now, just mm -hmm. lemonade, right? Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe, you know, a little, a little wine charm, or maybe you're making, uh, maybe we're making a bracelet together. Maybe we're making wind chimes because, mm -hmm. you know, with the spring weather mm -hmm. and all that, uh, but using a uh, handmade glass. So it's something a little bit more special than maybe you'd find in the local craft store. Right. Um, doing a little video. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, sky's the limit. I, I always like when people come and say, hey, can you make uh, ABC, whatever it is? You know, mm -hmm. can you make a dove? Can you make a yellow hummingbird? Can you do mm -hmm. this? I don't know. Let me try. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm excited. And I hope that, you know, this, this video um, gets you more exposed and more people get to, <laughs> to see and experience all the really amazing things that you do. Um, mm -hmm. You are unique. Yeah. You, you are unique at Water Street and that you're the only glass artist. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a, a cool thing. I mean, we, we're, we're pretty mixed bag at, at Water Street, though. But, yeah, you know, what, what you offer is, is a little different than when some of our other artists. Um, but, yeah. So, anyway, um, anything else? I think we're kind of at the end of our time. But um, oh, I, I appreciate the time and getting the chance to, to mm -hmm. talk. I, I miss everybody, you know, at Water Street. And... Uh, Hoping to be back in there and be uh, doing some torching in my my space again. But for now, the the studio here in my garage will have to do. But I hope people will look at you know check in on social media. I'm going to post some videos. Water Street will be sharing some hopefully. And yep. Um, yeah. Okay. All it's right, Victoria. Really it's a great great talking to you. And yes, I I do hope to see you soon. Not Thanks. not on a video. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. You're welcome. Ciao. Ciao.